Hey ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt, and welcome to my channel where we do spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. It's that time of year again, right after the 4th of July, when Joanne starts putting out their Halloween material, and you may be thinking to yourself, what the heck am I going to make? This decision could be overwhelming, because there are so many options. Should you make home decor? Should you make clothing? Should you make something utilitarian? Well, you're in luck because today I'm going to be going over three simple sewing projects regardless of your skill level. Let's get started. After going to Joanna browsing the Halloween fabrics they had available, I picked up two quilting cottons by Alexander Henry and a flannel with no designer name printed on the salvage. My plan is to make a cute half apron with the Angela's Attic print, a skirt with the Scary Influencers print, and pillowcases out of the moth snuggle flannel. I began by cutting my pillowcase pieces to be two pieces measuring 30 and a half by 35 inches and two pieces measuring 9 by 35 inches. I'll be sure to include the cutting instructions and measurements in the video description. For the half apron I cut one 39 by 23 inch piece to two and a quarter inch by width of fabric pieces and one two and a quarter by nine inch piece from the cotton and then remembered later I needed interfacing for this project so I cut two eight inch by width of fabric pieces of the fusible featherweight interfacing to reinforce my pocket. This apron was originally designed to have two different fabrics, one for the front and one for the back that would wrap around to the front to make up the pocket. I ultimately cut my fabric the two fabric way, which was completely unnecessary, so ignore my extra piece cutting. I'll include both the single and dual fabric cutting instructions in the description. Once I took my hip and waist measurements, I was able to determine my skirt size. I took note of which pieces I needed to make view C, or the skirt size I wanted to make, and began to unfold the pattern pieces and cutting out what I needed. Cindy was very helpful, as per usual, being alerted by the crinkling tissue paper. Cindy just got her summer haircut, so she looks like she's wearing a sleeveless cardigan or possibly a brat doll with the cutest of bear heads. When cutting pieces on bias, I like to use a transparent ruler to line up the grain line on the pattern with the fold or salvage of the material. The overlock stitch step to finish the seams bra edge is completely optional, so don't be deterred to make pillowcases if you don't have a serger. I also sewed a straight stitch a half inch from the edge to reinforce the pillow cuff, and then did some understitching to keep the seam folded to the inside of the pillowcase. This is where I realized I could have had my larger apron pieces as one consecutive piece. Alexander Henry has been one of my favorite quilt fabric design houses over the years with collections like the Gasleys and standalone prints like Pumpkin Party, Zombie Beauties and Brains, and Eye of the Moon. If you're not familiar, you should definitely check out their print selections. Mm -hmm. 
After applying my interfacing and folding my apron in half right side out, I folded my pocket around to the front of my apron with an 8 inch depth. Taking the top right corner of my pocket, I folded it parallel with the pocket bottom. Made a line a half inch from the 45 degree fold and then cut along the line. Once the sides of my apron were sewn and my apron was turned right side out, I was then able to do my top stitching. I did the pocket top edge first, followed by the pocket division seams and apron sides. I sewed all my top stitching 3 eighths of an inch from the edge where applicable. To make my scissor holster, I folded my strip in half right sides together and sewed a quarter inch seam allowance. I then turned my loop right side out and top stitched near the seamed edge to reinforce my stitching. I attached my loop 3 inches from the apron's edge and stitched back and forth at the loop's top to keep it secure. I pieced my apron ties together with a diagonal seam and then attached my tie band to my apron being sure to match the centers. I found that sewing a stitch line to use as a fold line reference is quicker than going and marking the line. I stitched a quarter inch from both edges of my apron ties and then pressed my raw edges to the inside of my tie band. I then finished the ends with an angled finish and top stitched my ties along the open edge. I opted to slip stitch the tie band along the top of the apron to avoid uneven stitching along the fold edge. To make fringe seams, you first need to sew your side seams together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance wrong sides together. Once complete, trim away about an eighth of an inch from the seam allowance and then fold the seam again, this time right sides together, and sew 3 8 of an inch from the fold. I was having my reservations about the print going a different direction on the waistband since I cut it on bias, so I decided to go with a black waistband instead. I recommend trying on your garment a few times while you're making it to check for things like sizing and just to see if any adjustments need to be made. To apply a zipper, first base close the opening in the center back seam, then pin the sides of the zipper to the seam allowance and hand base the zipper to the seam allowance only to be able to remove the pins. I like to use a pen to mark the location at the bottom of the zipper for when you're doing top stitching. Now you can do your top stitching. I like to stitch about 3 eighths of an inch from the zipper center. Once complete, remove your base stitching and you have a functioning zipper.
Now because I can't help but to think about how I can improve a project as I work on it, I found myself contemplating how a contrasting belt that would tie in the back would look to break up the black waistband. I decided to go for it, so I took apart my waistband at the side seams, cut two pieces two and a quarter inches by the width of the material, and another band on bias two and a quarter by 22-ish inches. I marked a line two inches from the bottom of the waistband, used this line to line up the edges of my bias, and sewed the bias to the waistband with a quarter inch seam allowance. Holding the bias over the raw edges, I was able to edge stitch my contrast band in place. After sewing the ties just like the apron, I matched the ends up to the contrasting band and sewed them back and forth several times, refinishing the waistband side seams and reattaching the waistband to the skirt where necessary. The waistband facing can now be attached, making sure to line up side seams and centers. To keep the facing from rolling up above the top of the waistband, I did some understitching on the facing side of the seam. To execute an easy hem, I used some prepackaged single fold bias tape. Simply sew along the fold nearest the hem edge, then fold to the inside and edge stitch in place. Folding raw edges to the inside of the waistband facing, slip stitch along the zipper and facing bottom. Although these projects were simple to make, sewing tends to be time consuming, so this video was a bit of a marathon, so I'm really glad we made it. Please let me know in the comments if you've been scoping out Halloween material at Joanne and which ones are your favorites. As always, thank you so, so much for visiting my creepy craft corner of the webs and watching till the end. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for all the Halloween and Halloween adjacent content coming up in the upcoming months. Now let's get to that grand reveal.